Fuck this boss. Bray! What? I... Okay, no, to learn at least. It's ridiculously overwhelming. Remember the first time you did raids and you did Ulm? It's kind of like that at the start, but if you get proficient at it, it all just clicks. Let me explain. So, for the gear, it's basically the same as the Duke, but instead of an arc light, you get yourself your best slash weapon. Unfortunately, I've only got a tentacle whip, so that's pretty terrible. Preferably, you get yourself a fang. A scythe would also be an option, but a fang will do fine. It's not like it's a massive DPS increase like with a Duke. A blood fury could be really nice for learning, but I got myself a torture for the extra damage. A ring of suffering is also very nice for the extra defenses and the reflected damage on the boss. For more extra damage, you get yourself thralls, bring the Book of the Dead, and and your thrall runes and you're ready to go. You get here via the fair ring. The fair ring code is BLS and it puts you right under the chambers of Zeric. From here you run southwest to the boat and board it. From there you run west, go into the temple. I just met someone who loves the videos, shout out Samwise. And all you gotta do is climb over this rock and you can start the boss fight. Vardovis has a couple of difficult mechanics that get thrown at you at the same time. When you enter, try and hit him with a special attack that lowers his defense. So pray melee and piety and smack him with a Bando's God Sword. From that point on, he'll start meleeing you. Over time, there will be axes thrown around the room. Install the Better NPC Highlight plugin, go to the True Tile section, and type in the codes 12225 and 12227. These are the axes IDs, so you'll see their hitbox. This will also be linked in the description. One of the boss's special attacks is almost completely avoidable if you stand against the outer rim of the arena. It's the ice attack. Now while moving around, you can still get in contact with it, so I'll quickly explain what it does. Vardorvis will kite around the room, and on the floor you'll see these cracks, just like in Muspa. Make sure you move off of them because a spike will emerge and you will take a lot of damage. Again, if you stand against the outer ridge of the arena, he will kite around, but it won't actually do anything. So at any point during this fight, try and get back there as soon as possible. The second special attack that happens is the head of the boss will come out of the ground and shoot a range attack at you. If you don't flick the range fast enough, it'll hit you and it'll turn your prayers off. This means you'll have a very high chance of getting comboed by that range attack and then its default melee attack. The best way to deal with this is putting your sounds on. It's got a very distinct sound and you can instantly flick the range when you hear it because it usually comes right after a default attack. Once you pray range against the arrow, flick right back the melee. And then of course I have to talk about the axes, the big problem in the room. They constantly get thrown from all angles, and you're going to have to get used to the patterns. Now I will explain how to axe skip. Now this you'll have to do when all three axes are right next to each other on the tile you're standing on. Once this happens, you have about two ticks to react, and you instantly click on the tile that I've marked right here, and back. You can also do it on the other side. And then there's this final special attack. Fardorvis will strangle you and you basically have to complete a capture. Just click all of these blood splats as quick as you can. Now the great thing about this phase is that you can eat during it. So usually I let my HP drop to about 50 to 40 HP and then right as this comes in, you can hear it by the sound cue, double eat. And you'll instantly be able to attack after. So it's a great little break during the whole fight. And that's actually it. Inherently, the fight isn't technically challenging, it's just that all of this gets thrown at you at once. If you have to axe skip while flicking range because the head just came out and then getting back to your spot and praying melee, it does get a bit annoying. But trust me, it took me about seven kills or something to get into it. I was super overwhelmed at the start and now I'm doing three kill trips easily. Now you're a pro PVMer. I've made a guide on every single boss of Desert Treasure 2. Don't know if that classifies you as a pro PVMer, but you're on the way. If you enjoyed these videos, leave a like, maybe subscribe. I've got a lot more heat that's going to be uploaded on this channel. Also, a video on the main channel very soon. So, subscribe to that one too. It's in the description. Ow.